Is your psoas feeling tight? Maybe you've been to some type of therapist who has told you that you have a tight psoas, but despite doing all the traditional stuff, it's just not feeling any better. On this week's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast, we're diving into why your psoas may be tight, but is not actually your problem. We're going to cue our introduction, and we're going to dive right into this conversation. Hey, welcome back, exercisers, to the Exercise is Health podcast, brought to you by Exercise for Life Studios and Muscle Activation Schaumburg, where we believe that your health is your most valuable asset, and the single best thing that you can do to both boost and protect this asset is exercise. Specifically, exercise is geared towards building the health and function of your muscles. We are your hosts, Charlie. And Julie. And today we are talking about the psoas. The psoas is one of those magical muscles that for so many people, they feel is tight. And they have been told and they have been informed and they have been evaluated to know for certain that it is tight. And because it is tight, it is the root of all their problems. But that may not actually be why you are experiencing the issues that you are. Yes, it may be tight. Yes, it may be uncomfortable, but that may not actually be the root of all your problems. On this week's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast, we are diving into why that is and what you can do about it. That's right. The psoas is such an interesting area because of the areas that it controls, but let's back up for just a minute. When your body is talking to you, and if you're listening to this podcast, your psoas might be talking to you a whole bunch, and people might have confirmed that via their tests and evals and all that stuff, that is just a signal from your body that something is going on. It's just that us as humans, we like to label that as uncomfortable and bad and negative and something to get rid of, rather than just, hey, my body's talking to me in this very specific way. Um, and because of this uh, human emotional labeling that we have, which I don't blame you, I don't like it when my mm. psoas feels really tight, um, we start to then try to like, label the psoas as having the issue the, the psoas you want to fix that no you're good okay. i'm just i'm just having a moment to myself right now okay <laughs> this um we start to label the psoas as bad and the psoas as tight and the psoas might be tight and it might be giving you signals of discomfort or tightness or pain or limit your motion or make you feel really weak in certain areas but that is simply your body communicating because really, your body cannot send your brain a text message. Your body cannot send your brain even a telegraph. Like whatever you think is less advanced, your body cannot do that. The way it communicates is by having symptoms. Symptoms of, of sometimes you label it as pain. Sometimes our clients say things like zinging or tightness is a symptom. Um, also, it can feel like weakness. Like, man, every time I, I step on this leg, it just really bothers me. Or when I sit and then I stand up, it's like, oh, I just have to like do these five moves to get my body moving again. That is just communication from your body that something is not going so well. And it might, again, be in your psoas, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the psoas is the root problem. Exactly. Now, the psoas, like Julie brought up earlier, is a very interesting muscle because of its roles, because of its functions, because of where it attaches. Uh, one thing that many people don't really understand about the psoas is that it attaches to your spine. It attaches to the front side of your spine. Oftentimes, we think of the spine as just, you know, the back, uh, but the spine obviously has a front as well, and the psoas is a muscle that attaches to the front of your spine. There are also two different kind of major groupings of the psoas um, and multiple different divisions of the psoas. So there's psoas major and psoas minor. And psoas major has multiple divisions of it. It has a lower division, a kind of upper division, and then a division that attaches right into your diaphragm. So it can actually affect your breathing and everything like that, okay? Um, it also attaches to the hip. And it runs along the front side of the hip, um, attaching to kind of the upper inside part of the hip. And so it can help to lift the leg up. So kind of its major functions that's often thought about is, you know, a hip flexor. Uh, but it's not your only hip flexor, but it does help to flex the hip. Uh, also, a spinal flexor or a muscle that would help you to, like, crunch or slouch. And again, it's not the only muscles that help you do that. But um, that is one of the things that it is good at, um, you know, both so as major and so as minor, okay? So that's important to understand because when we're talking about, like, well, why would my psoas be feeling tight or what's going on with it? When you realize uh, how large of an area that it attaches to, as well as how many different functions that it has, like we named 
two different functions, essentially with hip flexion and trunk flexion. Uh, but you know, it would have an ability to like rotate your trunk, have an ability to side bend your trunk uh, to a degree. It would also have an ability to spin your leg in into internal rotation. And so there are all these functions of the hip um, and of the trunk that it can perform, even though we primarily think of it as like a hip flexor uh, and a trunk flexor. And so when you again realize all the functions that it uh, that it has uh, that it can perform, as well as the number of attachment points that it has, how large of an area that it spans, um, in some ways it's no wonder that on so many people it's feeling tight because it does a lot. And Charlie, when you brought up this whole thing like hey, the psoas is a, a spine muscle. I honestly didn't know that like muscles could attach to the front of your spine until I was trained in MAT like mm -hmm. 10, 12 years ago. Right. Like when you think about your spine, you think of the muscles on the back, right? Like, like you could physically touch them, like the tense muscles on your back. And then when you think about muscles that like bend you forward, you think of like your abs, which are like very superficial tummy muscles, right? Like six pack muscles. But these muscles live on the front, but they live like deep like deep deep and so they have this because they span this giant area of like the front of your spine and then down into the front of your hip like front inner part of your um femur so it crosses the front of your hip as charlie's saying it covers such a big span no wonder it's so symptomatic because it will pick up and try to protect your body from a lot of stuff your hips not doing so hot your psoas could compensate for that tighten up protect limit, give you some pain signals, tell your body, hey, don't do this. Our hip's not working so well. If your trunk is not working so hot, you got a weak core. Your psoas is a really good candidate for saying, hey, let's protect. Let's put this tightness here. Let's make this person not feel comfortable when they're moving their trunk so that they don't move it. That's the way your body protects you. Another area that we see the psoas influencing a lot is your SI joint. And that's an area, that's a joint that's in your pelvis. And that, that joint doesn't have a lot of motion. And so as soon as like anything's going on with your hips or your core, a lot of people have symptoms in their SI joint just because there's not a lot of play in those like three to five degrees of motion that the average person has in their SI joint. So this, what's so interesting is that because it's spanning such a large area, it's not like one of those little tiny muscles that have, has a lot of power. It's a big muscle that has a lot of power and it spans a lot of joints and it has a lot of power. It goes from your diaphragm to the front of your hip. And so it's an amazing compensator. And if you're having symptoms in your psoas, that means your psoas is doing an awesome job at protecting you from something else. It's protecting you from something in one of the areas or one of the joints that it crosses, but it's not usually a psoas issue. You're absolutely right. It's usually not a psoas issue. Yes, you may be feeling your psoas, but like you said, there are so many things that the psoas does and so many opportunities for it to compensate for different areas of your body. Like you're saying, hey, if any one of your hip flexors is not working well, your psoas may have to pick up more of the slack. If any one of your trunk flexors is not working well, your psoas may have to pick up more of the slack. There are muscles that uh, control your knee that if those aren't working well, your psoas may have to pick up more of the slack. If something with trunk rotation or side bend is not working well, uh, your psoas may have to pick up more of the slack. And so because of how many opportunities uh, your psoas can have to compensate due to its attachments, um, due to how large of an area that it spans, all its different functions, uh, like we've been saying, like it's no wonder that you know your psoas is likely tight. But all that means, like you said, Julie, is that your psoas is actually doing its job. Your psoas is working well. The question is, what is it having to compensate for? What is it having to do more than its fair share of the workload for, okay? And this is where person by person, it starts to get a little bit more intricate. It starts to be a, more of a question of, okay, well, is it a trunk issue for you? Is it a hip issue for you? Is it a knee issue? Is it something going on with your SI? And that's where just this, this general recommendation of, well, you need to loosen up your psoas because it's doing too much. It's like, yeah, but is it doing too much because of the trunk? Is it doing too much because of the front side of the hip, the back side of the hip, the outside or inside of the hip? Is it doing too much because of the knee? You know, so there's a lot of reasons why it may be doing too much. And that's where you need to really start to evaluate um, and have some assessment done on your body to figure out exactly what your psoas is doing too much for, okay? Um, and so that is for us really where muscle activation techniques starts to come in because with the MAT process, 
that's where we're able to evaluate people's bodies and say, okay, yes, your psoas is feeling tight. Um, and you know what? It is your other hip flexors that are not doing enough. And so by getting your other hip flexors working better, we can start to have your psoas calm down more. Or it may be something in your trunk or maybe something on the back side of your hip. Like, hey, your psoas is tightening up because your glutes aren't doing enough. And getting your glutes working better now will all of a sudden allow your psoas to start to relax more. That's a lot of where the individuality comes in with this thing, um, even though for so many people, the psoas is feeling tight. That's right. Like if you went on a Google search and you were like, oh, my psoas is tight. What's the psoas release, right? Because the opposite of tight would be like release or relax or whatever. You kind of get some common stuff, right? Like push here, try to relax here. But what Charlie's saying like, hey, we don't know what area is not doing enough that is causing the psoas to be too tight. Because what a lot of us feel is like when we feel tightness, we want to relax it, which we think means loosen it or make it loose. But what the feeling that we're actually going after is like strength, balance, mobility, flexibility. And that is not achieved by looseness. That is achieved by every muscle or the majority of muscles or enough muscles are contracting appropriately, doing their job so that everywhere can be not too tight, not too much on tension. If we loosened everything, we'd all turn into like, like I want to say Gumby, but I think it would be more like a bag of bones, right? Yeah, like all of our bones would like slowly sink to our ankles and then that's where they'd all sit, right? Because there'd be no muscle tension keeping our bones and joints, you know, functioning properly. So the goal being is that all muscles or enough muscles are doing their job contracting appropriately so that other muscles don't have to be extra tight. And when you feel an extra tight one, your goal is not to loosen it. Your goal is to allow it to go back to normal tension because you've now looked at the trunk and the hips and the SI joint, those muscles, to figure out what's not working well, what's not contracting well, what's failing here, causing a weak system that makes the psoas have to protect. Because as long as your system stays weak or stays imbalanced, however you want to you know, conceptualize that, the psoas will keep returning to its tightness. So you can do all the release stuff that you want, all the stretches that you want, you've probably tried some, and it comes back, right? Because you haven't changed the environment. With muscle activation techniques, that's what we specifically are looking to do. We're looking at each muscle that helps control trunk flexion. And we're asking the question, hey, is the psoas really tight? Because the trunk flexors are not doing their job, and so the psoas is kicking in and doing the job of all of them, or some of them. Is the hip flexors, are they doing their job? And is this the reason why the, the psoas is now kicking in over time, being really tight, being symptomatic because the hip's not functioning properly and so on. And so we kind of go through the body in that manner to see wh what joint or what muscles are making this system weak and let's restore strength and connectivity and function there so that the psoas can go back to doing just the job of the psoas. Exactly. And that's really the, the overarching goal of MAT is like just get your muscles working the way they're supposed to work. So they just have to do their job and they don't have to worry about doing the jobs of all the other muscles because all the other muscles are working the way they're supposed to work. And like you said, Julie, like when you can have your system in that kind of balance where the muscles, all the muscles are working the way they're supposed to work, there's appropriate tension going throughout the entire system. And that is often what we experience as feeling loose. It's not a dulling of sensation. It's not a, you know, like, like you were saying, like a, uh, a Gumby just kind of, you know, totally uh, limp. It's actually like, no, 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 there is sufficient and appropriate tension going through all the different muscles of my body. I feel really connected to those areas and I'm not feeling certain muscles having to overwork. I'm not feeling certain muscles having to pull harder than other ones, uh, causing pain, causing the sensation of tightness. It's just like everything feels really locked in. So when we're talking about, okay, if I have a psoas issue, for us, step one is definitely going and getting your body assessed and addressed using the muscle activation techniques process. Again, the whole system is designed to figure out where you have muscles that aren't working well, causing other muscles to have to overwork. And then by addressing those underactive muscles, bringing them back up to speed, the overactive muscles can relax, can calm down, and things like the psoas that have to cover so many bases and have to do all these different functions, um, they can really start to relax and just function in the manner that they are designed to. That's step one. Step two then is 
once you get your system balanced out and start to say, okay, these are the areas that are having bigger issues, these are the groups of muscles that seem to be more problematic, then you can start doing specific exercise for those muscles to help bring them back up to speed. Like we've talked about in other podcasts, when it comes to strength and when it comes to the function of muscle, step one is making sure they're connected. That's the MAT piece. But then two, we need to build up the conditioning, we need to build up the actual output of them, um, and that's where you know more traditional strength training comes into play. That's right. Strength training is, is incredibly important for muscles, and it's kind of what's talked about on most exercise podcasts in terms of like, hey, we know that muscles stay healthy when they're challenged, when they have stress put in them, right, with exercise. And so we know that, hey, once muscles are functioning properly, meaning you got them assessed with MAT, good news, you're probably going to be way less symptomatic, but then it's time to also strengthen these muscles. Now, it's important here to also bring up, you might be listening to this and you might say, well, I already exercise. So I'm already on step two. I've already like blown past step one. And if you're listening to this, you probably have tried the releasing stuff. But the missing piece here is going back to step one and getting muscle activation techniques for the connectivity. We kind of think about muscle activation techniques and resistance training or exercise, whatever you want to think about the, the challenging your muscles, the labeling you want to have with that as almost like a, a cycle right? It's like, we know our bodies, we're always going to be using our bodies, right? The moment we stop using our bodies, we start losing our functions of our bodies, right? So we know we need to be moving, we need to be exercising, we need to be challenging our body. But that doesn't mean that we never have to go back to muscle activation techniques. Because as you use and move and challenge your body, it's very likely that muscles start to become offline, or they start to lose their connectivity or lose their efficiency. And that's where muscle activation techniques comes back in. It's like saying, hey, like, let's just double check to make sure all the muscles can be used when you're strengthening. Because when you go to do the resistance training piece, you're going to be strengthening the muscles that are really well connected to your nervous system. And MAT makes sure that, hey, as many muscles as possible are on board and ready to be strengthened. And that way you're not encouraging imbalance and your resistance training will really encourage really just that strict building strength, building endurance, building conditioning without enforcing and reinforcing the imbalance when you're not getting MAT. Absolutely. You know, one thing you brought up on our social media uh, last week, I believe it was, is I, I, I thought, I really loved this post, um, where you say, you know, step one is muscle activation technique. Step two is strength training. And if you've been doing a lot of step two but are not getting the results that you're wanting, remember, it's just step two. And so you need to go back and make sure that you're all, all also covering step one. And that is where we really see uh, the big difference maker is for people, is, is doing MAT as step one, making sure that they get their body functioning better, and then going and doing strength training with step two. That combination we see from a tightness perspective, from a symptom perspective, um, really be a, a complete game changer for so many people because it flies in the face of so much of what other people, are, uh, other types of practitioners and other thought uh, do and other thought processes promote, um, where usually step one is try to, you know, relax the tight stuff. And then step two, uh, maybe be, you know, do some at-home exercises with some bands or whatever. And we're like, no, 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 we need to first make sure that we get the muscles connected and functioning well uh, with MAT. And then two, we actually need to load your system and actually physically get it stronger. Um, and so that combination we see work exceptionally well for so many people, um, especially if they feel like their toe, their, their toe as, their so as is tight. <laughs> so with that in mind, um, if you're in the Chicagoland area or are willing to travel to the Chicagoland area and would like to see us for muscle activation techniques, all you have to do to get on our schedule is go to www.matschaumburg.com. There's a big green button that says Get Started. You can click that and you can see our availability for muscle activation techniques. You can schedule yourself for your initial consultation and assessment. And if you'd like our guidance uh, with your workouts, with your strength training on applying like our four exercise for life principles that we talk about a lot on this podcast, that's exactly what we help you do within the Exercise for Life membership. You can get 30 days to all the workouts for free by going to www.exerciseforlifestudios.com. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is constantly complaining about, you know, a tight psoas or tight hips or, you know, their back is feeling tight and they're saying, well, you know, it's my psoas that's causing the issue and everything like that. 
share this episode with them so they can understand that yes, their cell has may be tight, but it's probably not actually their problem, all right? It's probably the thing that is holding their system together. Um, and the, the problem is there's not enough stuff supporting their psoas. So share this episode with them so they can get that perspective and understand what to do about it. And while you're online, head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to us and leave us a rating and review. Not only does it help people find our podcast when they're looking for information on exercise, it also helps them find our podcast when they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us a five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week, and we'll talk with you all next week. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Julie and Charlie Gates, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical issue, consult a licensed physician.